Hello, I'm back again. I'm going to try and make a video about plying today. So the main thing we need to get started when we're plying is to have two spun bobbins to ply together into a two ply yarn. This is the Lazy Kate that came with my spinning wheel. And so this is the one I'm gonna to use today. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you just put the bobbins on these two spindles and there's a tensioning cord that I'm going to use. I wrapped it around the grooves in the bobbins. And uh, there's a spring on here and I have it, I have the tension as with everything on ever so slightly. It's just putting a little friction on the bobbins so that when I stop plying, they don't spin backwards on themselves and get tangled up. It keeps the, the fiber coming forward in a smooth, consistent way. And so um, I'm gonna make a two ply yarn because I have two singles here to work with. And I spin all of my singles uh, clockwise, which would make them a Z twist. Uh, and I just, to keep it simple, that's just what I do. I know you can, there's many ways that you can spin yarn using different directions of twist, but I try and keep it very consistent. I spin my singles clockwise and I ply my yarn counterclockwise, which means my yarn will have an S twist. And I just keep it uh, consistent in those two things because then I'm never like, oh, this single, I have this single, I don't remember what I've done. I always know I spun it clockwise. Uh, the other thing we're going to need is a nitty knotty. We'll use this to take the spun yarn off of the bobbin and get it ready for washing. Um, there's all different kinds. This one happens to be adjustable. I kind of I just like that because then when I'm ready to take it off, I just make it shorter and the yarn falls off. A lot of times they'll just have a flat end here, which will make it easy to fall off in that spot. But I also found it makes it easy to fall off when you're winding it on also. So I, I just like this one. I got it at Paradise Fibers. Uh, I, I don't know if they still have it, but I've been quite happy with it. And then one other thing I wanted to say about the bobbins that I spun is I broke them up into colors. I, I had a fiber braid that I divided basically into greens and into blues just so that I'll be able to see the two plies in the finished yarn more easily. And I made a little card and wrote down what type of fiber I used when I made these singles. And so this was gray Shetland wool which has a micron count of about, I think it's like around 30. So that's a good beginner wool. It is an easier wool to pull out of the fiber when it's in your hand and it holds the twist quite nicely. So um, that's part of why I used it. And what I did was I took, I pulled off a bit of the single. Here's the green one and the gray one is actually off of the blue. And I, taped it taut to this card. So this is what the single looks like um, as if it were on my wheel being spun because when you're spinning it, you're holding it tightly as you're winding it on the bobbin. And so if I wanted to try and make this yarn again and I had this fiber again, I could refer back to these notes that I've taken and try and get the single to be the same um, width as it is here on this card. I don't really do this anymore. I did this in the beginning because I thought it might be helpful and it never really <laughs> made a difference to me. But I am saying maybe this is something you would like to do to keep track of uh, the singles that are, you are making and maybe see how they change over time, um, you know, as your spinning is getting better or, you know, as you're changing what you want um, out of the yarn that you're making. Okay, now I'm sitting down getting ready to ply these two singles. Um, I have them on my Lazy Kate. That's just what this thing is called. It's basically the bobbin holder while you're plying. And when I spin the singles, I usually take a pin and wrap the end of the single around the pin and I tuck it down into the fiber on the bobbin. After I spin my singles, I usually uh, let them sit overnight so that the twist will even out along the single itself. It just, 
overnight the the twist will just sort of dissipate a little bit as it has sat there but it really hasn't gone anywhere once you wash the fiber the twist will come back but it just makes it a little bit easier to manage in the plying process everything isn't quite so tightly spun a lot of times i'll just spin a bunch of fiber into singles and then let a few bobbins build up and I'll ply them all at once, since plying often will go more quickly than spinning the fiber into singles. All right, so I'm taking the Lazy Kate and I'm putting it back here behind me. It's kind of out of the shot. I'll show you later what's going on with that. And as I said, I spun these singles clockwise, and so now I'm going to ply them in the opposite direction which would be counterclockwise. So the singles are clockwise with a Z twist and they are plied counterclockwise, which will give them an S twist. I'm just gonna pull it through the leader like I did when I was spinning. And you can just fold it back on itself so that the fiber will catch on, you know, on all sides and stay hooked into the leader. Or if you're having trouble, you can just tie the fiber onto the end of the leader, make a knot. It's fine. You can always um, just snip this and make another knot, knot and start there next time and you know just keep doing that. Whatever you gotta do to get it onto the bobbin to get going. And you can do this with the spinning as well. Um, you know, it's a little bit harder with fiber that you're still trying to put into a single, but you probably could do it if you have um, one of these higher micron count fibers that you're starting with. Okay, so I've tied the two singles onto the end of my leader. And as I said, we're plying, so we're gonna spin counterclockwise, which means the wheel is going to the left as I'm looking at it. And right now I don't have any take up on the wheel. I've taken all of the tension off. And so twist is just building up right here. I like to do that anytime I start plying or spinning, just take off all the tension so that I can start fresh and see um, what I think will be good for this particular project. So obviously I'm gonna have to add some. And usually when you're plying, um, you're gonna go a little bit more quickly so you can add more take up than you might be when you were spinning. You've already established what the singles are, so you're not sort of pulling from fiber trying to you know, calculate an evenness to it. You've already established the singles, so now you're just um, spinning them together with a twist to make the yarn. And also what I did is when I spun the yarn, I did it on this um, larger diameter, the larger groove on my whorl, and when I'm plying, I've moved it down to the smaller. I think that's um, how these whorls work for shat, is the larger groove is for spinning and the smaller groove is for plying. And obviously as you get better, you'll have your own preferences at how fast you like to ply. Um, I think plying is a little bit easier than spinning, so I generally like to do it more quickly. But so I've added some take up. So now we're getting it onto the bobbin. It's still quite twisted, so I'm gonna add some more take up, which means I'm adding more um, tension. And I wanna try and keep this back, these back singles are getting a little twisted because I've been moving the fiber around. But I wanna try and keep these from tangling with each other and getting twisted and keeping the twist in front of my fingers where I've pinched it because this is what, where the yarn is being made with the twist from the wheel. So sometimes I put a finger between the two singles to sort of keep them separate. But yeah, so they're, they're basically we're applying. You can see right here um, the Yarn's getting built up here at the end, so I just changed the hook. The main reason you want to try and keep your bobbins tidy is because then it just keeps the tension even throughout. You know, the smaller the diameter, the, um, it, this diameter will have a different tension than this where it's um, wider back here. So if you have a consistent diameter across the bobbin with the yarn as you're adding it on, 
uh, you'll be able to have a more uh, consistent tension. So just smoothing back, letting the twist build up, pushing forward, back, forward, just like spinning, except we're going in the opposite direction and we're holding two singles that we've previously spun in our hand. I had a little kink up there. So one thing you can do is sort of pull them apart until you get to the kink. The other thing is if, so now I have kind of a lot of spin there, twist there, and I want to alleviate that. If I let the, if I slowly move my fingers back, the twist will come back to where my fingers are, which will loosen up the twist up here. So if you have too much twist up here, just move your fingers back until they separate and you can sort of untwist it a little bit and then start going forward and add as much twist as you'd like. Um, something that might happen, now it's getting out of control again, my bobbin. Let's move it back. Something that can happen when you're first learning to ply is you might have parts of the single that are not as strong. You maybe did a join and as you're pulling on it, it comes apart. Or maybe there was just a little bit of the fiber that didn't have enough twist to hold it together. So when I do to, um, so if I say it breaks, you're going to have these two ends with the fluffy bits and you kind of want to catch it early if you can because if this you know this can untwist quite a bit and then you have more fluffy bit but so if they come apart you know just kind of grab it quickly and see if you can keep the twist on the single and then I just lay so here's the broken part and here's the other single and I'm just laying the the green single between those two parts so it's green, green, blue, and then I start spinning. Now you're going to have this little tail here. And because it's now fluffy, you can probably pull it out a little bit. Although this fiber is pretty sturdy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. I mean, I'll probably just leave that in there. And then if I come across it while I'm knitting or working with the yarn, um, I will either clip it or maybe just not use this section of the yarn because there's this imperfection there. But, um, you know, this is handmade. There's going to have, it's not going to be perfect. It's going to have some characteristics to it that will show you it's handmade. And that would be one of them. I use commercial yarn and I have had knots in it as I've used it. So it's, um, I don't, I don't feel like that is a, a terrible problem. You just sort of, uh, fix it and keep going forward. All you're trying to do is make a yarn that you're happy to work with. And the more you spin and the more you ply, the less often you will have those breakages and, um, you won't even have to worry about it. So. The other thing that might happen is everything just breaks. So now you have two ends. You've got the two singles here and the two singles there and it all just breaks. Or, or yeah. So then I would just tighten a knot. Like I said, commercial yarn, I have found knots in it. It's fine. So I've tied it in a knot. I'm going to smooth out my singles behind me a little bit. Get some twists going. It might be a little thick to get through the orifice hole, but went through just fine. Just keep going. And that is actually something you can do also if your one of your singles breaks and you just can't splice it together. Because in the beginning I do remember that being pretty pretty tricky. I mean if you want you can also just try and keep these pieces smaller when you're trying to you know, you're just basically laying all the fibers next to each other and then spinning. But, you know, maybe it's a wool that's not quite as uh, high a micron count and so it's a little bit more slippery or doesn't really, or, you know, it's already been twisted and you're really having trouble. I would just break the other one and tie a knot. You just want to keep going forward. You, you know, you don't, it's not going to be perfect yarn. Certainly in the beginning, we're just practicing 
and trying to get the yarn on the bobbin. See this one, the knot's a little too thick to go through the orifice. So I'm just gonna wind it on. And even then, like you can just wind the knot on. And even if you don't have a bunch of um, twist up here, we're just practicing. Oh, here's another thing that can happen. See, this is where the single has gone free form and made this little pigtail, which is what this is called. So you just pull it out, sort of smooth. My fibers back here, they're getting a little bit unruly, so I'm just trying to even everything out. Maybe keep my finger between the two singles so that that doesn't keep happening. Okay, keep spinning. And then I'm spinning counterclockwise, which is to the left. I'm actually not spinning. I'm plying counterclockwise to the left. And there you go. I moved the camera out and you can see this is where the Lazy Kate is. It could even be like another foot back. I sort of moved it in so that you can see it in the picture. But you can have, you know, if you give it lots of space to wind off, that can be helpful in terms of, you know, keeping these two singles under control. So um, I have it right here to just show you, but I might even push it back farther there. Okay, so now we've plied some singles into this two-ply yarn, and to get it off the bobbin, we are going to use the Nitty Knotty. So you need to have one side going one direction and the other side going the other direction. I mean, mostly they usually just come that way, so you don't really have to fiddle with it. This one's kind of different that way. So I'm going to hold it with my right hand in the middle. You can see I have the end of the yarn in that hand. I'm going to go over, come to the bottom and go under, and go back up to the top, go over, bottom on the other side, go under. You just keep doing that and I'm just pulling it off the bobbin. And one, it makes one continuous hank of yarn. Make sure I keep it in the frame here a little bit. Oh, so it's kind of pulling off stiffly from uh, the bobbin. And that's because I still have the tension on. I can either just turn it all the way off and see if it, yeah, spinning more freely. All right, try and keep it out of the way of the hooks. Okay, and here we tied it on. I'm even able to just pull it apart. And so you have it on, and here's my end. It's on this side, and my beginning is over on this side. You got to kind of get them so that they come in the same spot. So I backtrack the end until it will meet up with the front. Backtrack the I've unwound this part off until it will meet with the front. So that's where I'll tie it. Okay, 
So here it's all tied on to the nitty knotty, uh, where the start and the end is where this big tie is. I went and got some cotton string that I use for weaving. And you can see there's these other knots and imperfections, you know, where we joined and here's the other knot. I tied it together quite a few times. And so the main thing when I'm doing it, I want to remember that this is the knot that I'm going, this is the start and the end. Um, you know, as I come to these other knots, I can see how the yarn is there and deal with it then. But I want to know this is the, where I'm going to cut it when I'm taking it off of, taking it off to, out of the hank to wind it into a ball. So, what I do is I will put a tie on either side of that knot so that I can remember that's the start and finish. Okay. So here, I just divide it in half. I come up through the middle, go over the top, and come back through the middle. Kind of like making a figure eight infinity. And I just tie it. And I'm not tying it loosely. I mean, I'm tying it loosely. I'm not tying it tightly. It's loose, so that will give the yarn enough room to sort of move around when I'm washing it. It won't be stuck together and get felted on itself. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of this start finish knot so I have two ties right by the um, start finish knot that I will work with in the future so what you want to do is basically make this kind of tie on each one of these four sections this is a pretty small amount of fiber, so you probably could just get away with two. But I'll just show. So I did it there. I'm going to move to the next one, divide it in the middle, come up through the middle, around, back through the middle, tie it. And then you can just release this clip in the middle, push it down a little bit, and you have your hank of yarn with all the ties. And it's spinning up a little bit, that's fine, it just needs to be washed. That will get all the twist to even out a little bit. So that's what I'm going to go do next. Okay, here I am in my laundry room. I'm going to take a bucket that I saved just for washing yarn and put some very hot water into it. Sometimes I even boil the water. I want any dye or anything like that to come off the fiber when I'm washing it. And if there's going to be some reaction because the temperature is really hot, I want it to happen now before I actually use the fiber. And I just put a little bit of eucalyptus soap in there and I'm going to just dunk the fiber. I use this small toilet plunger just to push the water, just to push the fiber down in the water. I'm not trying to agitate it. I, f I feel like I did a few too many times there. Normally I would just push it down once, make sure it all gets nice and wet, and then I'm going to walk away and let it sit for 15 minutes, half an hour, overnight, come back when I remember, so that I can lay the yarn out to dry. Okay, here I'm just laying out the yarn on my table and I'm wrapping in the towel to absorb any moisture that's in it. This is a pretty small skein, so it's not that hard to dry out, but um, then I usually just pick up the skein and try and make sure all the yarn is going in the circular direction, that nothing's going the wrong way throughout the ties so that when I pull on it to help spread the twist evenly along the fibers, it will easily just um, be in the right direction. And I don't want to get tangled or anything. So here I am just pulling it to even out the twist along the fibers. I don't thwack it or anything. I feel like just tugging on it like this works out well and then I just lay it to dry. Thanks for watching. 
those are basically the tips and techniques I have for plying yarn and finishing it so that it's ready to use in another project. I really enjoy spinning and making yarn. I find it very relaxing. Hopefully this is helping you figure it out for yourselves or is inspiring you to try it out. And uh, yeah, good luck with your projects and thanks for watching. Have a great day. Okay, so if you stuck around this long, you get to see the skeins that I made when I just started spinning. And you can see that the width of the singles is all over the place, the plying is all over the place, and uh, yeah, there's a lot going on there. But I just practiced, it's something that I love to do, and I did it a lot, and with with that comes um, a little bit of success and so now I feel like my yarn is more consistent and every time I make it because it was kind of a struggle in the beginning it makes me so happy because I can see where I've come from and I get to enjoy the yarn that I make and the process of spinning. Okay well hopefully uh, that inspires you to keep trying and uh, have a great day.